Hello and welcome. Welcome to next week, last night. My name is Stuart Johnson. Thank you for joining me. We got a great show in store for you. It's going to be a more international edition of the show today, since nothing really happened in the U.S. over the weekend. Um, now, I was going to avoid talking about the Meghan Markle stuff, but given the lack of alternatives and the pressure from my producers to get this show more views, here we are. So, um, in in a basic sense, and this is just my understanding of the situation. Uh, Meghan Markle said something, and then a bunch of guys in robes lost their shit about it. And now Meghan and her husband have been invited to a uh, a wedding by some guy called Walter Frey. I don't I, I don't know honestly. I don't really keep up with the royal family. I don't give enough of a shit about them to do so. Uh, but Piers Morgan resigned, and I do know that's a good thing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, um, I mentioned it, now I get to put it in the title, moving on. In a shocking piece of news that sent ripples across the entire planet, Netflix have announced they will be uh, cracking down on password sharing uh, by comparing the IP address used to log into an account with the IP address that was used to originally create that account. In unrelated news, Netflix's stock dropped 3% today. Seriously, I mean, well, why do this? P password sharing is an integral part of, of Netflix culture. I mean, it's tradition at this point. Removing people's option to share their password with their friends is not only counterproductive because it won't lead to more people signing up, it'll just lead to more people resorting to piracy. It'll also just drive the, inter uh, the, the online community to find a way to circumvent your new restrictions because guess what? That's what they do like the whole point of the online community so uh take my advice here netflix be grateful for what you have and don't bite the hand that feeds you and finally rounding up the weekend's news uh i would like to simply send my support to angel di maria the Paris saint germain footballer whose house was robbed sunday night whilst he was busy playing a match in league Gun. Uh, his family was reportedly held at gunpoint whilst the aforementioned robbers took most of the family's uh, valuables Fortunately, no one was harmed, um, and uh, and we hope that that the perpetrators are brought to justice. Um, reports indicate that there was a second player whose house was also robbed that same evening, but the identity of that individual is not currently known to the public. Um, once once again, uh, our thoughts are with the families and the victims uh, during this difficult time. What a shit day for Paris. We'll be right back. This episode of Next Week Last Night is brought to you by the American Red Cross. Uh, please follow the link in the description box below to go to their website and consider making a donation. Uh, it's hell on earth out there right now for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of really, really bad stuff's going on. So uh, if you have a few bucks to spare, uh, consider donating to a really great charitable cause. Again, the link will be in the description box below. Uh, back to the program now. Thank you. Welcome back. All right. So as you know, the Oscars are right around the corner and this year's nominations are set to be released any day now. In fact, by the time you watch this, they'll probably have already come out. But I'm not here to talk about that. Although I will say if Trial of the Chicago 7 doesn't get a Best Picture nomination, it will be daylight robbery. But like I said, we're here to talk about something else. See, for all the glitz and glamour of the Oscars, it's not the golden statues or Narnia-style dresses that have attracted the most attention in recent years. No, it's been the consistent outrage over the apparent lack of diversity when it comes to Academy Award nominations, summed up perhaps most aptly in the popular and catchy slogan, hashtag Oscars so white. The debate came back to the fore during this year's Golden Globes, and you can bet your ass it'll rear its ugly head again once this year's nominations are announced. So, in that spirit... Let's talk about diversity. Now, before I say anything else, let me acknowledge that as a straight white man, I have to tread rather lightly when it comes to this topic, because I simply don't know and can't know what it's like being a woman or minority in Hollywood. And I get that. I do. I understand that I don't understand. But in a world where everyone gets to have an opinion on everything, here is how I see the situation. Now, I'm going to say something mildly unpopular in a second. 
Uh, but before that, I just want to say that if this video does get me canceled in 15 years' time, I apologize for absolutely none of it, despite whatever my publicist forces me to say. Anyway, <clears throat> here we go. It is not the job of the Oscars to worry about diversity. It is not their job to make sure everyone is represented. The only job, only job of the Oscars is to reward excellence, the best. Their job is to reward the best, the best. Whatever that means in a given year, if that means nominating five white men for best leading actor, so be it. If it means nominating five black men for best leading actor, so be it. If it means nominating five women for best director, great, awesome. If it means nominating five Asian women for best supporting actress, that's how it should be. But their job as an awards ceremony is to reward the best regardless of race, gender, or sexual orientation. They have to reward the best. Now, I don't know why there is this obsession in our culture where pandering to minorities in media is more important than actual equality and equity, but fine, that's another conversation for another day. It doesn't change the fact that pressuring the Oscars to nominate more black actors and directors does nothing to further black rights in America, and only serves to turn the Oscars into some kind of liberal diversity show at a time when the ceremony is already starting to lose some of its appeal due to how unbearably fucking political it's become. But seriously, there's no escaping it. They can't even find a fucking host to host the show without someone on Twitter digging up a sketch they did back in like 2003 revealing them to be a, a closet racist misogynist bigot who should never be allowed to work another job again. Everything's become a political statement. The nominees are a political statement. The winners are a political statement. Even the movies that get made these days, these Oscar, ta Oscar bait type films, they're all political statements. And it's exhausting. And it quite frankly undercuts the struggles that some of these communities have to deal with on a daily basis by trivializing them. You want more diversity in Hollywood, you want better representation at the Oscars, great, me too. But it is not the Academy's job to worry about that. It's on the studios. The studios are the ones who have to start giving more opportunities to black actors, Asian actors, queer actors, hell, maybe even a white actor who isn't from North America or Western Europe. That would be a nice change. Because when given the chance, the Academy has nominated black actors and directors and women directors, and they've done it gladly. And they've done it because those people deserved it, not as a political statement to appease liberal Hollywood. Look at Moonlight. Look at Black Klansmen, Get Out, The Green Book, Parasite, Lady Bird. All movies that were either nominated or won Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Uh, uh, Mahershala Ali, John David Washington, David Kaluuya, all nominated for Best Actor or, or Best Supporting Actor. Greta Gerwig, a woman, was nominated for Best Director. It happens. And it would happen a lot more if these people were given more opportunities to showcase their talent. Because when they have been given those opportunities, they've proven on a pretty consistent basis that they are more than good enough to compete with their white and male counterparts. Now, how we get these studios to provide more opportunities, that is where a debate and a conversation can be had. Some people have recommended quotas, that every movie should have a certain number of black and, and queer actors. Uh, some people have said that studios should be required to cast a certain number of women in leading roles per year. But the problem with quotas is that they don't work. 90% of the time, quotas don't work. And it's because they are a narrow-minded, simplistic solution to a complex and systemic issue. Slapping a quota on the problem going, fuck it, there, deal with it now does nothing to solve the problem, and in fact only makes things worse. 
I really do think that the, the best thing you can do is just vote with your wallet. Because these studios, they don't give a shit how much diversity they do or don't have in their movies. They care about profit margins. And if they find that a movie starring a black actor can make just as much money as a movie starring a white actor, believe me, they will have no problem making more movies starring black actors. Shit, they'd, ra they'd, they'd cast a raccoon in a leading role, as long as it means their movie's in the green at the end of the day. They don't care. So go out there and vote with your wallet. Write these studios on social media. Petition them. Let them know that you want them to give more opportunities to other kinds of people with other kinds of backgrounds to tell their stories and bring them to life. But when you do that, make sure you let them tell those stories in their way. Don't tokenize them. Don't write a character into a show who's a, a gay character whose only role in the show is to be gay. Well, what's his arc? He doesn't have one. Well, what's his purpose? He doesn't have one. He's just there to be the gay character. Don't tokenize them. Treat them seriously and let these people tell the stories they want to tell the way they want to tell them, regardless of whether or not those stories have anything to do with their race, gender, sexual orientation, or religion for that matter. And to the Academy, do not, I repeat, do not allow peer pressure to push you into giving out participation awards to individuals and projects you know don't deserve them. Because it brings into question the legitimacy and the integrity of your entire institution. And it harms those black actors and those women and those directors who do get nominations because their achievement then gets downplayed as, well, they only did it because he's black. He only won because he wanted a black guy to win it. Or she was only nominated because he wanted to nominate a woman. Here, I'll give you the perfect example. Uh, take Black Panther. A movie that was uh, a very popular, did extremely well at the box office, and it was nominated for Best Picture. Even though if you ask the average moviegoer, they'd probably tell you it wasn't even the best comic book movie of the year it came out, let alone one of the ten best movies overall. I mean, we're talking about a year where you had Deadpool 2, you had Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, you had Avengers Infinity War, and yet Black Panther got a Best Picture nomination? Now, under normal circumstances, I'd go, ah, well, you know, it's the Academy. I mean, they have weird taste, don't they? So, I don't know. What do I know? But, but given the peer pressure that has been put on the Academy to reward diversity, the skeptic in me, I'd be lying if I said the skeptic in me doesn't think that the movie may have been nominated because it has a virtually all-black cast and a black director and is set in Africa and deals with African culture and, and black history. And I don't want that to be the case. I want to believe the movie was nominated on merit, but I can't do it with 100% certainty. And that's not only, that's why tokenism is not only bad, it's also dangerous. Because of the seed of doubt it plants in the viewer's mind, due to which he can't trust the institution's judgment anymore because he doesn't know if it's being informed by objective critique or political bias. And for all of those who are thinking, oh, the Academy would never give in to peer pressure, man. Come on, they wouldn't do that. Really? Really? You think so? Are you sure? Remember the Best Popular Movie Award? Remember that? Remember when the Academy thought it was a good idea to create an Oscar for the Best popular movie an idea so stupid that really only the academy could have come up with it come to think of it trust me the academy is more than capable of giving in to peer pressure but they need to stop because otherwise the oscars are going to become just another generic popularity contest and then it won't even fucking matter who does or does not get nominated that's our show. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.